Good morning, folks. We've got tidbits on solar storms, the Lachamp geomagnetic excursion, and a number of climate punches as well. We are starting, however, with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was much quieter than the days before. The sunspots on the south are in decay, and they're heading for the limb. We had seen numerous eruptions from that sunspot group, and we still have two of those on the way to Earth. The first one was forecast to impact overnight, but it is late. This is a double-edged sword. If it's late, it means that it's likely slightly weaker than anticipated. But if it takes a while to arrive today, it'll be much closer to a one-two punch when the second one arrives. Hitting in close succession often means bigger storms. We're still not expecting anything at scary levels with these eruptions, but it's worth watching the next two days as these CMEs arrive. Let's watch the sunspot progression, the southern group as it developed, crossed the disk, and now begins to decay as it heads towards the limb. We have been monitoring not only its umbral development, but the magnetic complexity and its solar flaring. We identified the Delta-class sunspots within the active region, those are the ones that flared, and now, as it decays and begins to head for the far side, we see it losing magnetic complexity with only scant positive blue remaining isolated amidst the red there. Folks, here's the satellite shots from Hurricane Ida. Eye wall lightning in the mix before landfall and a churning disaster when it hit. The storm is weakening quickly now on its way inland and to the north. You can see that lightning better when the geo color is replaced with a short wave return from GOES-16. It would be a gorgeous splendor but for what's transpiring veiled beneath the clouds. Yusoskin, one of the modern fathers of solar science, has co-authored a conclusive tying of major isotopic distributions on Earth to the activity of the Sun, particularly the extreme proton storms. Some had questioned the connection when it was just a few examples, now they've tracked about two dozen. And over the longer term, not looking at individual events, but eras of the planet, we find Lachamp geomagnetic excursion showing up nicely in the data here. A long-term spike derived from the weaker field, allowing in more cosmic energy. Interesting note up next, on that record vortex a couple years ago, turns out they were just a few hours away from seeing a total ozone column loss in the vortex, a zero count. This is of course tied to Earth's weakening magnetic field, much more so than they like to say in their chemical analyses. Of course, solar protons are what's destroying the ozone more and more as we lose Earth's field. Up next, we recall the thing they should be scaling over to the Earth but are not, the infrared beams of the aurora at Jupiter heating the atmosphere to solve the 50-year mystery of why its atmosphere was so much hotter than they believed. Now, look at them hammering in the magnetosphere, ionosphere, thermosphere coupling at Jupiter. Folks, if they fully figure out how completely the sun controls the Jovian atmosphere before they figure it out here on Earth, I am not going to be thrilled. The IPCC will and NASA's Karen, but not me. Last but not least, we've been discussing how the melting polar ice triggers safety mechanisms on Earth, the increased snowfall on polar land, the shutdown of the heat transport in the ocean, the Gulf Stream and AMOC, and the freshening of the seas, allowing for easier refreeze the next winter. Folks, we can't say for sure that those safety mechanisms are kicking in, including the Beaufort Gyre's release of its cold freshwater climate bomb. But one of the things we'd want to see to know what's happening is a slowdown of the Arctic ice decline despite the warming atmosphere and warming waters. That's what they see, and they say it's powerful enough to continue into the future. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn tons more about these climate issues, the isotope spikes in the past and what they mean, and all about space weather using the playlists on our channel homepage. Just click Suspicious Observers and it will take you right there. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.